From this super controversial Bart Simpson minifigure to this not so kid friendly Lego theme, these are some of the craziest Lego sets that just had to be banned. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Legos are a kid's toy. They never make anything that's not meant for kids. While that may be the case, once you see what I have on this list, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Like, take a look at this Lego Ula minifigure. She's got on a pretty questionable outfit, which has raised a few eyebrows from Lego fans alike. For those who are unfamiliar with her, Ula is a character from the Star Wars series whose role was not so PG. She lived in Jabba's palace, and Jabba the Hutt had her doing some very adult-rated things. For this to be made into Lego is something that was highly controversial and probably not okay to introduce to kids. If this didn't open your eyes a little bit, this next one is bound to. This is a fan-made recreation of an accident on a highway, made with a bunch of assets from the Lego City theme. Now, in my opinion, this is nowhere near appropriate for kids. Highway accidents might look cool in movies, but for kids to be recreating them with their toys just doesn't sit right with me. It's even scary for adults to witness a car crash, but for one this massive to be recreated so easily could pose a bit of a problem. The last thing that needs to be on a child's mind is what would happen if their mom or dad crashed into an oil tanker on their next road trip. What's really weird about this video is that the creator shows how peaceful things were in this imaginary city for a good amount of time before letting the floodgates open. I don't know. Maybe I'm just looking too deep into this, but I feel like a kid could see the video like this and easily start overthinking and get themselves really wound up. Up next is a set that was one of the biggest mistakes LEGO has ever made. Construction themed sets are something that LEGO has been making for a very long time now, but one in particular was very offensive, and how it even made it onto the shelves is beyond me. It was called the Construction Crew Set, and featured a few construction workers, a bulldozer, and some other things you'd see on a typical construction site. There were a few tech text boxes on the cover that said things like men at work and it's a dirty job but someone's got to do it. But one of those text blocks was very out of line. Under a picture of one of the minifigures, there was a text bubble that said, hey babe, implying that the construction worker was catcalling. This was brought to everyone's attention by Josh Stearns, a man who lived in Massachusetts at the time. Stearns is a father of two sons and was appalled by the message written on the box. He found this Lego set in the hands of his four-year-old son and decided to post some pictures of it to Tumblr, captioning it with, I was so disappointed to see the brand affiliated with a product that normalized street harassment and catcalling. In a matter of days, Stearns' Tumblr post started getting the attention of people everywhere. The set started getting negative reviews on Amazon, people were posting their own opinion about it, and dozens of news articles had been published. According to Charlotte Simonson, the text was made by a company called Creative Imagination and was discontinued in the summer of 2010. Just two years later, in 2012, Creative Imagination ceased all operations. Then, in 2013, Stearns made his post on Tumblr, and the situation unraveled. It seems like there was a little bit of time between when the set was actually made and when people started talking about the problem, but that doesn't excuse LEGO's actions. They've since released more sets under the name Construction Crew, so this is a little hard to find, but nonetheless, it's out there. Putting that aside though, up next is the Osprey V22. Back in early 2020, LEGO announced a brand new Technic set, the Osprey V22. For those unfamiliar, the V22 Osprey is a real-life tilt-rotor military aircraft that combines the functionalities of a helicopter and a turboprop plane. The LEGO version was set to be a part of the Technic line, known for its intricate and realistic builds. Fans were ecstatic. The set looked sleek, detailed, and was a fresh addition to the Technic lineup. But here's where things took a turn. The real-world Osprey V-22 is used by militaries around the world and has been linked to several controversial operations. LEGO, being a brand that prides itself on promoting peace and creativity, suddenly found itself in the midst of a debate. Should a children's toy company be producing a set based on a current military machine? Petitions started circulating. Fans were divided. Some argued that LEGO had previously released sets based on historical military vehicles, so what was the big deal? Others felt it was a step too far, especially for a modern machine that's still in use. LEGO decided it was time to make a move, and just days before its official release, LEGO announced that the Osprey V22 would not be hitting the shelves. In their statement, they mentioned that the set did not meet their brand values. It was very bold of them, especially considering the time and resources that go into developing a new set. But here's where things get interesting. Some sets had already been shipped to retailers, and a few lucky fans managed to get their hands on this now 
now ultra rare set. Prices on the online marketplaces skyrocketed. We're talking thousands of dollars for a set that was originally priced at around 100 bucks. The Osprey V22 became a legend in the LEGO community. A set that was produced, ready to launch, and then vanished. It's a reminder of the fine line toy companies walk, especially when basing products on real world machines. Whether you agree with LEGO's decisions or not, it's undeniable that the Osprey V22 saga added a fascinating chapter to LEGO's rich history. It's a testament to the brand's commitment to its values, even if it means making tough decisions. And for those lucky few who snagged a set, well, they own a piece of LEGO history that's as controversial as it is rare. Speaking of history, this next piece is actually pretty famous, but the stuff that was going on makes me question if this is really meant for kids. This is the LEGO Colosseum from the days of the Roman Empire, and it has a pretty gruesome past. The Roman Empire is one of the most well-known empires in all of history, so well-known in fact that some people just can't get it off their mind. The Romans were known for their flourishing economy, genius inventions, and captivating entertainment. The problem lies in the entertainment. Since there was no technology back then, the only way people could entertain themselves was with other people. And unfortunately, one of the most popular forms of entertainment was fighting. This is exactly what the Colosseum was made for. After its original construction in 80 AD, it was mostly used for gladiator fights and animal hunts, which were loved by a lot of Romans. For those who may not know, gladiators were brave warriors who did nothing but fight until the day they died, which was usually in battle. In the Colosseum, two gladiators would walk in and one would walk out. I think you can put together what happened to one of them. Many lives were lost inside that place, and although the rich history of the Romans is important to know, finding out like this might not be so good for kids. Up next, we have a set that at first glance you might assume was made for kids, but before you get all riled up, let me just explain a little bit. This is the Lego Pac-Man arcade set. With over 2,600 pieces, this set has a lot going on for itself. It's got a movable joystick, a score point counter at the top, a mechanical maze, and even a coin slot with a cool light up brick. This set, despite being really cool, is definitely a risk to build. This set is in the 18 plus section on the LEGO website, so it's clear LEGO knows how dangerous this could be for children. With all the moving parts, it can turn into a real problem if kids that are too young get their hands on it. Worst case scenario, someone's three year old sees the light up LEGO bricks, the moving parts, and everything else going on, and ends up getting his hands stuck in the underside somehow. I don't know what it is with three year olds, but they just feel the need to put their hands on literally everything. I didn't even tell you the worst part yet. This set has a big mechanical maze, which is cool because you can simulate a real Pac-Man game, making Pac-Man chase after Blinky and Clyde. It'd be super fun for people who aren't learning the building blocks of the world, but for someone like this, things could go sour very fast. Keeping the functionality theme going, this next piece is actually really cool until you think about the damage it could cause. This is the Lego typewriter, which was actually taken from the Lego ideas section and brought into the limelight. At first glance, the typewriter looks like it could be a lot of fun. Even though you can't actually type anything with it, it moves and sounds just like a real one. In case you don't know what a typewriter is, which I really hope isn't the case, here's a clip of someone using one in a college lecture. Now, imagine all that noise with Legos. Pretty cool, right? Well, the only way Legos can make that much noise is if the moving parts move with a lot of force. This can end up being a pretty big problem if it ends up in the wrong hands. I can see it now. Some evil older brother putting his younger brother's hand where the keys smack and letting it rip because we all know how evil older brothers are. Point is, this could be a real hazard for kids. So if any of you end up buying one, be sure to keep it to yourself. Last but not least on our list, we have the Lamborghini Sean. Okay, to be fair, this is probably one of the coolest Lego sets I've ever seen. So I can see why kids would wanna get their hands on it. But regardless, this is probably something that kids shouldn't get their hands on. This Lamborghini is part of the technical line, so there are a ton of very small pieces that are used to put it together. As we all know, small pieces and kids do not go together very well, because they have a bad habit of eating just about anything. Even for kids who are a little older though, this car might prompt them to do some pretty dangerous things. God forbid a kid gets a bright idea like hopping in his parents' car and seeing how far he can get. Fact is, driving is for people who are a little bit older, so unless the kid is smart enough to not let it get into his head, it should probably be kept a safe distance away. Let's take a look at the LEGO Explore Super Truck. This beast of a Lego set was released in 2002 and was only available in North America. You could purchase it at your average everyday toy store like Toys R Us or Walmart. The set only had 40 pieces, but it definitely was not small. The base of the truck was huge and the wheels made it even bigger. It almost feels like it was made to look like one of those colossal dump trucks, which I personally loved as a 
kit. These massive wheels would later prove to be a serious problem for the super truck set though, and had a lot of people worried about the future of LEGO. In 2006, LEGO issued a full recall after two children were injured while playing with the truck. It seemed that the big wheels on the truck were detachable, and when unattached, exposed a metal axle which was a serious puncture hazard for children. In light of this, LEGO offered everyone who bought the super truck a $15 refund, even though the retail price was $20. Not nice, LEGO. Their reason for doing this was that the set came with an additional 40 LEGO Duplo blocks and were considered safe for children 18 months and up. Fortunately, LEGO has only ever recalled three items, and the last one was over 10 years ago, way back in 2009. So it sounds like they've been doing a pretty good job of keeping their toys safe. The next band item I'll be talking about is one that you might not expect. So, we've all heard of the famous Mr. Gold minifigure. I mean, he was even in one of our videos a little while ago. Well, what if I told you that Mr. Money over here was actually banned from being manufactured and distributed in the blink of an eye? In case you haven't heard, only 5,000 versions of Mr. Gold were ever made in the history of LEGO. Considering how big of a company LEGO is, 5,000 is barely anything. And there's actually a reason that they had to cap the number there. Since Mr. Gold was made to be rare from the beginning, LEGO fans took a very big interest in him. Since he was so rare and expensive, not everyone could either afford one or even find one to begin with. This led to people taking drastic measures to do whatever they could to get their hands on one, even if it wasn't made by LEGO themselves. All of a sudden, fake Mr. Gold minifigures started popping up everywhere, and people were buying them without even thinking twice. While some buyers may have known that they were purchasing a fake, most people didn't, and would then take the Mr. Gold they thought was real and try to flip him for an insane amount of profit. They would take the minifigure to stores that buy rare Lego items, happy as can be, and walk out extremely disappointed. This happened so many times at a store called Bricknology that they decided to write an article about it. They were even nice enough to include pictures of what a real Mr. Gold minifigure looks like and how to tell it apart from a fake. This problem started way back in the day, but it still troubles people even now. Fake Mr. Gold is the least of LEGO's worries though, since there are hundreds of other fake LEGO items nowadays. Moving on from that, up next we have a LEGO set that was never actually released, but still somehow one of the most popular sets among diehard LEGO fans. To explain this, I'll need to give a little context. Back in 2008, actors by the name of Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul accepted roles for a show they thought was a little weird and ended up being the best decision they ever made, with the show today having millions of fans across the world. The show was called Breaking Bad, and it basically showcases what could happen when life gets a little messy. Kids, this show is made for adults, so don't watch it without your parents' permission. Because of how popular the show is, fans of Breaking Bad and LEGO alike decided to take it upon themselves to make the worlds collide. The guys over at Citizen Brick were the first to do it, and the set went viral. They called it the Super Lab playset, and it featured the three main characters... Um, let's just call it cooking. This set was released in 2013 and retailed for $250. In 2023, 10 whole years later, this set is still being sold for an unbelievable $1,500. That is crazy. It wasn't even made by LEGO themselves. In fact, they even made a comment about the set at the height of its popularity, stating that they would not be manufacturing anything related to Breaking Bad at any point in time. This was a sad day for Jesse fans. Up next is a set that was one of the biggest mistakes LEGO has ever made. Construction themed sets are something that LEGO has been making for a very long time now, but one in particular was very offensive, and how it even made it onto the shelves is beyond me. It was called the Construction Crew Set, and featured a few construction workers, a bulldozer, and some other things you'd see on a typical construction site. There were a few text boxes on the cover that said things like, men at work, and it's a dirty job but someone's gotta do it. But one of those text blocks was very out of line. Under a picture of one of the minifigures, there was a text bubble that said, Hey babe, implying that the construction worker was catcalling. This was brought to everyone's attention by Josh Stearns, a man who lived in Massachusetts at the time. Stearns is a father of two sons and was appalled by the message written on the box. He found this Lego set in the hands of his four-year-old son and decided to post some pictures of it to Tumblr, captioning it with, I was so disappointed to see the brand affiliated with a product that normalized street harassment and catcalling. In a matter 
matter of days, Stern's Tumblr post started getting the attention of people everywhere. The set started getting negative reviews on Amazon, people were posting their own opinion about it, and dozens of news articles have been published. According to Charlotte Simonson, the text was made by a company called Creative Imagination. Just two years later, in 2012, Creative Imagination ceased all operations. Then, in 2013, Stearns made his post on Tumblr, and the situation unraveled. It seems like there was a little bit of time between when the set was actually made and when people started talking about the problem, but that doesn't excuse LEGO's actions. They've since released more sets under the name Construction Crew, so this is a little hard to find, but nonetheless, it's out there, and it definitely deserved to get banned. Okay, that last segment was a little serious, so let's talk about something more positive. Up next is the LEGO Star Wars Twilight set, released in 2008. Now, I wasn't very into talking about LEGOs with other people at this time. I just wanted to get my hands on as much LEGO Star Wars as I could and build it as fast as possible. But from what I can see, it seems like some other people weren't in the same boat. In an article by Isaiah McCall, written in October 2018, he wrote about the Twilight set and seemed to have had some information regarding how the set was received when it first launched. According to McCall, this set brought back terrible memories for him. He stated that he just wants to forget this era of Star Wars as a whole, and that the set takes him right back to it. And apparently, neither the show nor the set it was based on were received well at the time. Another LEGO fanatic by the name of Svelte wrote a review on a site called Eurobrick, and luckily for LEGO, he was a whole lot more supportive of the set. Svelte takes the reader through the process of building the set with him, which makes for a pretty enjoyable read. It gives you a first look at everything you could want to know about the LEGO Twilight ship. From the box to the instructions to every brick in the bag, this guy documented everything. Svelte stated in the beginning of his review that he knows how much everyone dislikes the set, but wants to find out for himself just how bad it really is. He ends the review off by saying that it's not as ugly as everyone's making it out to be, but it's not the prettiest LEGO Star Wars set released in recent years. Unfortunately, not everyone thought of the Twilight ship like he did, and after just four months of shelf life, it was retired for good. It basically got run off the shelves for being too ugly. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I personally don't think this set is ugly at all. It perfectly replicates the Twilight ship from the Clone Wars, and that's all I'm here for when it comes to LEGO Star Wars. I just want it to look like how it does on TV. Anyways, up next is another set the adults had some problems with what LEGO was doing. In 2013, LEGO announced that they would be releasing a small line of Simpsons toys in 2014, and depending on customers' reactions, had the chance to be the next big collab, such as Star Wars or Harry Potter. Almost immediately, though, Though, fans started giving their opinions, and they were not happy. Unfortunately, the original forum that was on the LEGO website is gone, but some messages were recorded in an article from Wired. A user with the name SuperFox9738 said that if LEGO were to release the Simpsons products, that they would be boycotting everything LEGO. They continued by saying that LEGO is a kid-friendly company, and that they should remain that way. Many people agreed with SuperFox, and said things like, it'd probably get no sales, and that it's a bad idea. There were many other things being thrown around, but the main idea was this. There are no Simpsons fans who like Legos. Some months later though, the fire died out, and people were starting to talk about how excited they were for the set to release. Then on February 3rd, 2014, the first Simpsons set hit the shelves. Surprisingly, it was there for a very long time, but was eventually retired in 2017. This wasn't a part of the plan though. The fire from back in 2014 had been on a low burn this whole time, and right around the set's retirement, people were in an outrage all over again. Lego hasn't mentioned anything about The Simpsons since the retirement of that one set, so it's very possible that enough people were upset for long enough to get the show permanently banned from LEGO. Up next is a set you've probably never seen before, but let me warn you, just about every one of these are pretty scary looking. These are the LEGO Mixels, and they were introduced back in 2014 as part of a collab between LEGO and Cartoon Network. Out of everything Cartoon Network has ever made, why they decided to use the Mixels does not make any sense to me. Like, look at this one. What is that thing? I mean, they could have done anything. Teen Titans, regular show, Adventure Time, but instead we got this. If you couldn't already tell, the LEGO Mixels got discontinued after about two years because of negative feedback, and I'm sure you can see why. But of course, since practically nobody wanted these guys, hardly any sold, making some of them very rare and valuable today, with the most valuable being around $350 when it retailed for just $150. The ones you want to look out for are the Mixels series boxes, specifically 7 and 8. Each box came with nine individually packaged Mixels, but since not a lot of people wanted these when they were available, they were able to double in value. Regardless, I'm pretty happy these guys got banned. The last thing I want to see in a LEGO store is whatever that thing is. Up next was actually one of the biggest things that's ever happened in LEGO. Over the years, the Bricks have collaborated with 
a lot of different franchises, from movies to TV shows to even Ikea. A lot of companies have teamed up with them, but there was one company that LEGO had been making sets of for a very long time, and in 2014, everything fell apart. That company was Shell. Shell is an oil company that's been around for over 100 years. About 34 years after its initial launch, LEGO and Shell decided to team up, and the first collaboration set ever was released, the Mercedes Shell Tanker. It was just a one-piece set and was released in 1966 for just $2.40. This was the first of many LEGO pieces that would release with Shell branding, but because of corruption within the oil company, LEGO got burned. In 2014, it was revealed that Shell had knowingly been letting oil spill in Nigeria in 2008. The company had been warned about the spill when it happened and proceeded to do nothing about it for the next six years. This was an atrocity that should never have been committed, and because of LEGO's long history with Shell, they got pulled right into the mix. People were beyond upset about the entire situation, and LEGO took it upon themselves to do what was right. After undergoing an immense amount of pressure from the Greenpeace Foundation, they cut ties with Shell. What the oil company had done was inhumane, and LEGO is all about having fun. So making sure that Shell was banned from collaborating with LEGO was the best thing they could have done. This next item was something you might remember if you were a kid during this time. LEGO Friends was introduced in 2012, and it did exactly what LEGO wanted it to do. Friends was introduced and marketed towards LEGO's female audience. Since most of what had been released at the time catered more towards boys, someone at LEGO thought it would be a good idea to try and include the girls too. Unfortunately for LEGO, they went about it all wrong, and a lot of people ended up disagreeing with them as opposed to supporting it. They were accused of encouraging gender stereotypes, and if you took just one look at what was being released, you'd see just how right the people were. The LEGO Friends set had a lot more pink than anything else that was being released at the time. There was also an entire set dedicated to a girl's puppy house, equipped with flowers and a full pet grooming set. On top of that, there was a new car in bright pink and purple colors, which was labeled as Stephanie's car. It was very clear that LEGO didn't think very hard before releasing these sets to the public. Or did they? Remember before? when I said they got exactly what they wanted? Well, the year LEGO Friends hit the shelves, LEGO's profit went up by 35%, which in the business world is a massive spike. After receiving an intense amount of backlash from people everywhere, LEGO decided to roll back the LEGO Friends theme for a good amount of time before re-releasing what we have today. There are still a few remnants from the LEGO Friends sets of the past, but they're much better than they used to be. And finally, last but certainly not least on our list, we have the Osprey V22. Back in early 2020, LEGO announced a brand new Technic set, the Osprey V22. For those unfamiliar, the V22 Osprey is a real-life tilt-trotter military aircraft that combines the functionalities of a helicopter and a turboprop plane. The LEGO version was set to be part of the Technic line, known for its intricate and realistic builds. Fans were ecstatic. The set looked sleek, detailed, and was a fresh addition to the Technic lineup. But here's where things took a turn. The real-world Osprey V-22 is used by militaries around the world and has been linked to several controversial operations. LEGO, a brand that prides itself on promoting peace and creativity, suddenly found itself in the midst of a debate. Should a children's toy company be producing a set based on a current military machine? Petitions started circulating. Fans were divided. Some argued that LEGO had previously released sets based on historical military vehicles. So what was the big deal? Others felt it was a step too far, especially for a modern machine still in use. LEGO decided it was time to make a move, and just days before its official release, LEGO announced that the Osprey V22 would not be hitting the shelves. In their statement, they mentioned that the set did not meet their brand values, which was a very bold move of them, especially considering the time and resources that go into developing a new set. But here's where things get interesting. Some sets had already been shipped to retailers, and a few lucky fans managed to get their hands on this now ultra-rare set. Prices on online marketplaces skyrocketed. We're talking thousands of dollars for a set that was originally priced at around 100 bucks. The Osprey V22 became a legend in the LEGO community, a set that was produced, ready to launch, and then vanished. It's a reminder of the fine line toy companies walk, especially when basing products on real world machines. Whether you agree with LEGO's decision or not, it's undeniable that the Osprey V22 saga added a fascinating chapter to LEGO's rich history. It's a testament to the brand's commitment to its value values, even if it means making tough decisions. And for those lucky few who snagged a set, well, they own a piece of LEGO history that's as controversial as it is rare. Jeffrey and Friends LEGO Set This was first released to the public in 2016, and it's safe to say that this thing is pretty scary looking. 
For those who don't know, Jeffrey is the mascot for a toy store called Toys R Us, and Lego wanted to make something in collaboration with the toy company. Usually Jeffrey looks like a happy-go-lucky giraffe who brings nothing but joy to the world, but when a Lego version was made, he turned into something out of a horror movie. There are a few other versions of Jeffrey that have been made over the years, but this one is by far the weirdest. Up next is the Nesquik Bunny minifigure, and no, I'm not talking about Bugs Bunny, I mean the original Nesquik Bunny from back in the day. At first glance, this minifigure doesn't look that weird. Like, sure, the headpiece looks a little funny, and something about his eyes definitely gives me the heebie-jeebies. But overall, there isn't that much wrong with it, until you take the mask off. The bunny's head is actually removable, and when what's under is revealed, it's a sight to see. Under the mask is a fully whited out minifigure head, with nothing but two eyes and a smile. The two eyes are positioned very far apart to accommodate for the mask, but let's be honest, we can all agree that was a bad idea. Those eyes are extremely creepy, and when they're together with the smile, it makes everything way worse. Like, why is the smile even there? It's not like you can see it while the bunny mask is on. It almost feels like it was put there as a joke by whoever designed it, and I thought Jeffrey was straight out of a horror movie. Up next, we have a Lego item that I honestly didn't even know existed before. Now, we all love Legos here, right? Well, have any of you guys ever wished that you could live as an actual Lego in the real world? Well, if you did, now you can. These are the iconic Lego hands, and they're used for exactly what they look like they're used for, whatever that is. In a practical sense, these things are basically useless. Lego hands were made to function with Legos, not with anything that happens in daily life. While Lego may have thought these were a fun idea, they ended up looking very odd, and they give off a really weird vibe that I can't quite put my finger on. I don't know, something about them kind of just freaks me out. Even though only six of these have sold in the past year, for some reason, other companies companies decided to make their own. Here's one from fun.com, and this one even comes with a minifigure head too. I wonder how you see out of that thing. For some reason, this is being sold for almost $50, while the originals on the LEGO website retailed for just $13. Unfortunately, they're sold out right now, so if you want to look like my buddy Emmett, you're going to have to cough up $50. Bucks. Up next is this LEGO Squidward minifigure from 2006. Wow, I have never in my life seen Mr. Tentacles looking so bad. Since the release of this minifigure, Figure, Lego has done a much better job of making Squidward look more like himself, but we're not here to talk about that. This atrocity was part of the Adventures in Bikini Bottom set, and is one of the three minifigures featured in the box, the other two of course being Spongebob and Patrick. Lego really dropped the ball on this one, and it's obvious. Spongebob and Patrick look pretty much fine considering the time period these were launched, but Squidward really does just look awful. He really didn't deserve that after all Spongebob and Patrick put him through. Come on, Lego. Up next, Next is Chili the Horse from the Camping Trip set. This Lego set is pretty old, so odds are you haven't met my friend Chili over here. But let me tell you, she is one of the most terrifying things I think I've ever seen. I mean, why would Lego make a horse in the first place, let alone one that looks so realistic? Lego has been able to make horses that look somewhat normal since Chili first saw the light of day, but unfortunately, they just couldn't make it work 25 years ago. Up next is one of the cutest little guys ever from the Star Wars franchise. These are called Porgs, and they were first seen in Episode 7, The Return of the Jedi. Star Wars fans immediately took a liking to them, so of course, Lego had to add them to their collection. I hate to say it, but they didn't do a very good job. The set they decided to release was this, and for a set solely dedicated to Porgs, Lego really should have done a better job. And it's not like they haven't before. This style of Lego set has become very popular over the years. Like this one. Lego did an incredible job recreating a helmet from the most iconic bounty hunter in the series. Or this one. This is another great example of the guys over at Lego putting their heads together and ending up with a great product. I could go on forever about how much better sets in this style are when compared to the Porg, but I don't want to be too much of a negative Nancy. I just want the best for you, Lego. Up next is this very odd-looking Super Mario piece. This version of Mario is part of the Adventures with Mario set, which was actually released pretty recently. The set dropped in July 2020 and is still available for purchase today, but let's be honest, with Mario looking like that, I think these sets are just going to continue to sit on the shelves. I'm not too sure what LEGO thought they were doing with this one, but it's clear not too much thought went into it. The idea behind the set is actually really cool. It showcases a small-scale Mario level that you might find in a game like New Super Super Mario Bros. Wii. There's also a little Goomba and Bowser Jr. waiting for you at the end of the course. 
Honestly, everything looks really cool besides the character models. I feel like this set would look a lot less weird if they made the set more miniature and just had Mario as an actual minifigure instead of whatever this is. The same could be said for Bowser Jr. He looks just as awkward as Mario does and isn't doing the set any favors. While the idea behind this operation was very cool, the execution was not as good as it could have been. Hopefully they take this as constructive criticism and make the next Mario set the best thing ever. Up next is something so so out of the ordinary, I didn't even know it was real. This is the NHL Slammer Stadium set, released in 2003. Take a look at this set. Something seem off? Yeah, you're telling me. What is up with these hockey players? They look like they're straight from Easter Island. Anyways, this set is basically just a little ice hockey rink with some weird looking players, but there is something that's actually really cool about it. This set came with a mini Lego hockey puck, so if you wanted to, you could simulate a hockey game with a Lego set. I don't know though, I'm not too sure I want these guys playing on my team. Up next is not one, not two, but an entire army of Lego Skibbity Toilets. No, seriously, look at this. Made by Brick Folk, these are just a couple of the dozens of Skibbity Toilets that have been made. Every single one of these is a 3D model, and while they may just be concepts, it's safe to say that they definitely deserve a spot on our weird list. I mean, like, look at this one. The fact that this could actually be recreated in real life is insane to me. I really hope I don't run into this army one day. Up next is the best Astro Droid in the whole galaxy, R2-D2. Now, before you jump to any conclusions, just give me a little time to explain. In no way am I saying that every LEGO R2-D2 unit looks weird, because that is absolutely not the case. To be honest, the minifigures are some of my favorites. The R2 unit that I'm referring to is the 8009 LEGO Star Wars Technic R2-D2. See, I told you this one was weird. And when compared to the remake released in 2012, this one is... Well, just plain weird. There are 240 pieces, but for some reason, it just looks really empty. There are holes throughout the entire piece, and where there aren't holes, there are huge color blocks that aren't coordinated very well. While this set may resemble R2-D2, it definitely doesn't embody him. Is that eye creeping on anyone else? It goes for around $60 new in the box, and considering it was released over 20 years ago, that is a really bad price. Most LEGO sets that came out that long ago have an insanely high price nowadays, especially if they've been kept in the packaging all this time. But not this guy. Unfortunately for him, he's the weirdest looking of the bunch, and for that reason, nobody really wants to buy him. I can't say I blame them though. The new one is just so much better. Up next is something that I really hope all of you can remember. If not, we might have a serious problem. Did you guys read Calvin and Hobbes as a kid? Well, little did I know, they actually collabed with LEGO at one point and had their own sets made. Look at these guys. Aren't they so cool? Kidding guys. Kidding. LEGO. How could you do this to the best kid tiger duo of all time? Calvin and Hobbes was the best thing ever to me when I was younger, and for one of my favorite toy companies to go and do this to them, I don't even know how to react. This set is part of the Brickheads theme, which has a history of making some very odd looking sets. It seems like the goal of the Brickheads theme is to achieve this look, but I feel like they just end up looking bad as opposed to unique. Like take a look at these, Darth Vader, Goofy, Sonic. They all look super weird. Listen, all I know is that LEGO has a really good thing going on with minifigures, so maybe they should just stick to that. And don't even get me started on what they did to my guy Yoda. This isn't a part of the Brickhead's theme, but I think we can all agree he is not looking too good here. Why is he looking at me like that? Up next, let's look into the LEGO NBA theme. LEGO has been making basketball items for a long time now, with the first being the Penn basketball back in 2001. In 2002, they decided to start releasing actual sets for the basketball basketball line, so of course they had to have some minifigures in there. However, this proved to be a little difficult for them to pull off. Here's a picture of one of the minifigures from 2002. See anything wrong? Well, I sure do. This guy's face is completely messed up. These minifigures were made in honor of some of the best basketball players of that era, but for some reason, LEGO thought it would be a good idea to just add facial features right onto the head of the minifigures. They already had enough going with the number and the jersey name, but for some reason, I guess they wanted to do this too. When Changing the facial features on a minifigure, it only really works when you completely change the headpiece that's being put onto the actual minifigure's body. For example, Squidward. Notice how they made his head look how it's supposed to instead of just slapping his face onto a regular old minifigure head? They made this mistake with literally every basketball minifigure from that time period. Take a look. We got Allen Iverson, Antoine Walker, Allen Houston, Chris Webber, Jason Kidd. They even did it to the default basketball minifigures. I guess maybe they were 
trying to change their style to see what people would like? I don't know, but I have to give it to them. These minifigures are pretty popular, but I can't help but think they're giving me a weird look. Okay, brace yourself, because this next item is really creepy. This is the Lego Friends Buildable Hedgehog Storage Set, released in 2017, and it is by far one of the weirdest Lego sets I have ever seen in my life. For starters, let's just take a look at it. This thing is composed of pieces that are in no way capable of making a detailed version of a hedgehog. Secondly, it feels like this thing is literally alive. I don't know why, but Lego decided to make the eyes look very human. I swear it's looking at me. And then to top it all off, they gave it a little pink and blue bow on its head. And I'm sure they were just trying to make it look cute, but for me, it just made it look all the more horrifying. I'm not done yet though. Along with everything I just listed, apparently this set is meant to be able to store something. There is no way that I would be able to trust this hedgehog with any of my belongings. Like, just look at it. You're telling me it wouldn't do something to them? Thankfully, Lego made up for it and made a hedgehog that actually looks normal. So if you ever wanted a Lego hedgehog, I'd go with this one if I were you. Last but not least, we have the Lego System McDonald's Restaurant Set. This is a tiny 98-piece Lego set released in 1999 that was meant to replicate a McDonald's drive through coming with two minifigures and this cool little car. But let me tell you, this set is just downright weird. Even just based on how the box looks, I'd be uneasy. Like, come on, you're telling me when you roll up to a McDonald's to get your Oreo McFlurry, this is what you want to see? This McDonald's looks straight out of a horror movie, I swear. I would expect the worker to pop out at me if my McDonald's looked like this. Despite being only 98 pieces, the set manages to sell for a whopping $300. That's literally $300 a piece. I don't know who let that happen, but I definitely need to have a word with them. Let me know what your favorite item was in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe.